This is day D1963, and I'm out pulling cameras. Now, I've had these cameras out since May, April or May. This is a natural slew crossing. There's a big reservoir there. A lot of human pressure up that way, so I've got a trail camera right here that's been watching this little funnel right here. And I don't know if you can see it, but I already see all kinds of deer tracks coming right through this funnel. Hog tracks too, both. So I should have some good intel here, but I also set up this licking branch right here. And I have a camera over there that was watching right over here, and I got a licking branch there. I don't expect a lot of buck activity in here right now. This ain't where the bucks bed. But I guarantee you come late October, these bucks are going to cruise through here. Now why do I have cameras up all summer long? I'm wanting to monitor doe traffic. I want to know exactly their preferred way of getting through this area. Some of them come right along here. Major doe bedding up on this little knob. Some of them are bedding over here, coming down this trail. So, why do I put two, three cameras in an area like this? Because I have a, that big sycamore prepped. I have a tree right back here prepped. I have two trees further down here. And depending on the wind, I can figure out how the does will travel through here. Once you know how does travel through a piece of ground, it's pretty easy then to figure out how bucks are going to come through here to, to scout. If most of the deer are coming along here, the does, and the bucks are going to walk across this and centric this, these trails at some point. What I love about this spot is this pinches down right here. Because the lake and the slough come in here and it's just some deer will cross out here. But the vast majority are going to cross on this dry, shallow end. So, sitting up here with a wind and thermal that's consistently pulling out towards that lake is going to be awesome. Because for the bucks to get downwind of the major doe travel, they have to be over here. So it's just, this is just a perfect bench point for all deer movement, whether you're talking does or cruising bucks. And obviously if a buck's chasing a doe, the doe's going to use the trail that they're most used to. They're going to come through here. I haven't been back here since I put in this box scrape, but look at this. Look at all the tracks in here. They're hitting this already. There's no doubt in my mind. We probably can walk right down this trail. Look, 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 look. Look at all the deer tracks. And once again, this is confirming everything. There's small tracks and there's big tracks. This is a major doe travel area. That's what I focus on. And, you know, you don't always have to have pictures of bucks to use cameras to effectively hunt bucks. Keeping track of does and how they like to travel is very useful knowledge for any time 20 October through the rest of the season down here. Now, I always, when I check this area, I always walk in and leave scent coming from this way. Why do I do that? Because when I hunt, I'm coming in from the lake. I don't want to get a pattern established with these deer. The humans typically come from that way because they don't. Very few people are going to take the time and effort to get back here that way. When they can walk in three quarters of a mile from the road up here. This is a good area. It's a nice open area. Uh, something else that I want to cover. In early season, when you can find openings like this, where you got thick over story here, and openings there when the thermals kick in. Typically, they're going to start rising in this area. Okay? So you've got a pull towards the lake. And you've got natural currents coming up. Any deer walking this trail or walking that edge is going to be total oblivious to a hunter set up back here. Alright? So I'm going to 
pull these cameras and we'll see what we got. Dave D1963 out.